Hey everyone, welcome back to the final video in the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In this final video, we're going to be covering some of those helpful tools, customizations, and features that we skipped in the previous videos. Now, this certainly won't be everything that you can do in here, but I did want to wrap up this series with some incredibly useful features that people really don't think about. The first of those is actually something called ThinkScript. This is going to be the coding language that Thinkorsim uses to create custom studies, chart labels, or even custom columns. Now, I definitely don't expect anyone watching this to make their own custom scripts, but there are thousands of them out there already pre-made just waiting for you to use. So if we go through an example together, let's say on the chart that I'm looking at currently, it would be really helpful for me to see all of these company fundamentals right up here at the top of the screen. So maybe things like the P.E. ratio, maybe the earnings per share, the market cap of the company, just random things that a fundamental investor or a long term investor might find important. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is actually get out of Thinkorswim and just pull up Google. And from here, I'm actually just going to type in exactly what I'm looking for. So in this case, we are looking for stock fundamental labels in ThinkScript. Looking down here in the list of results, you can actually see the first one here is a website called Use ThinkScript, and this is the one that I usually rely on. It's basically just a forum where people post all of their custom scripts, and you can go into the community in here and then search for what you're looking for, or just throw in your search into Google, and it usually is going to come up with exactly what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and open this first one up here. And looking at the comment here at the top from this person, we can see how this label is going to appear on our chart. And it does include PE ratio, EPS, free cash flow, and a whole lot of others that we could use. And if we scroll down a little bit, this is the actual script right here. And what we want to do is actually just copy all of it. We're going to go ahead and copy all of the script here. We can then go back to Thinkorswim. And once back in TOS, we'll come up here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. But instead of searching for an indicator over here on the left, what we're going to do is come down below and create a brand new one. So looking right up here, we can see the current script in here is not what we want. So we'll go ahead and start by deleting that out of there. And then I'm going to paste in that script that we copied by hitting control V on my keyboard. We can now see the script right here. And we could always make changes to it if we needed to. And we can also give our study a new name right up here above. So in my case, I'm just going to call this Fundamental Labels. And now that I'm happy with that, we'll just come down to the lower right and hit OK. And you can see over here, it does default as a lower study. And that was actually in the code. The person who made this said they wanted it to appear below their chart. But in my case, what I'm going to do is just drag it up here to the top of the chart. And that way, when I come down here and hit OK, it's actually going to appear at the very top of our chart. And now looking up here, we can see the P.E. ratio for Palantir, 308. We can see the earnings per share over the last uh, 12 months and a bunch of other helpful info that we might find useful. But I will also say that besides adding things like chart labels or custom chart indicators, we could also add custom columns to our watch list or on our monitor page to track our open positions. So let's just say for this next example, we wanted to add a new column to keep track of how much these companies are up or down year to date. So rather than just seeing the percent change for the day, how much it's up or down percentage wise today, how much is it up for this year, for the year of 2024? So just like before, we'll go ahead and pull up Google again. This time I said we're going to be looking for the percent change year to date. And again, I usually throw in think script column just to narrow down the search a little bit better. Looking down below, it looks like there is a ThinkScript page made for this. So let's go ahead and open that up. And it looks like in this one, they explain that we could do it for week to date, month to date, and year to date returns. So looking down here, looks like we can find the code right here. So let's go ahead and copy that. We can then head back over to Thinkorswim. And this time, because it is going to be a custom column, the way we're going to add this is actually by clicking on the gear icon in our position section. And then within this little column window where we can add our columns, what we're going to do is scroll down and look for the custom columns. So right here, custom one, custom two, three, four, five, 
this is where we can make our own. And rather than using a create icon down here, what we have to do is find the column we want to adjust and then click on this little scroll icon on the left hand side. Now within this window is where we can add that custom script we copied earlier. But before we do that, let's go ahead and delete whatever's in here. Then we're going to come up here to the think script editor, which is where we can now paste our code. And just like before, I'm going to click in this box, hit control V on the keyboard. And now before I hit OK and take a look at this, let's go ahead and change the name of it so I can find it later. Percent change year to date is what I'm going to call it. And now when we come down below and hit OK, and then add it to our position section, when we come down below and hit OK again, you'll now see that new column we just added up here, percent change year to date, and we can see Intel's down 49%, looks like AT&T is up 31%, and WBD is down 12%. But this thing script is definitely a useful tool that a lot of people don't even think about. So if you're ever looking at Thinkorswim and you go, man, I wish they had this tool or this feature or this study, you can probably go ahead and Google a custom thing script and see if you can just import it into your own platform. Now, besides thing script, the next thing we're gonna talk about is for those of you out there who trade options. Now we discussed it before in our previous video that one way to place trades is by coming up here to the trade tab and then down here below, we can see a nice big option chain for the stock we want to trade. But a lot of people don't realize that we could incorporate this on our charts, and that way we can look at a chart at the same time we're trading our options. So for example, if we came up here and pulled up our chart for a second, we can again see we've got a nice big chart for Palantir right here. But let's say I wanted to have a nice big option chain to the right-hand side of this chart. So what I'm going to do is first off, come up here to the grid icon in the upper right-hand corner, and looking down below at all these little icons here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the second one in order to add a second chart to the right of this one. So now looking here, we've got the chart of Palantir on the left and we've got a blank chart here on the right. But since I want these two linked, I'm gonna come up here and click on the little chain link icon and make it red one to match our chart over here on the left. So now that I've got two charts for Palantir pulled up, I'm actually gonna come over here to the sidebar of the far right hand chart and I'm first gonna deselect the chart to completely get rid of it. And then I can just come down below and click on option chain. And now I've got a nice big chart of Palantir on the left. And then I've got my option chain over here on the right, which just like anything else, I can then customize. I can add my own columns in here. And then when I'm ready, I could come down below and let's say I wanted to create a option trade. So looking here, I'm now selling 10 of the 45 strike puts against Palantir. But that really is it. It's just a tool that a lot of people don't know is here. So I wanted to point it out to all of you options traders out there. Now, moving on from the option chain, if we go ahead and delete this out of here, I also want to mention that Thinkorswim does have an incredibly simple automated backtesting tool in here, which can be done directly on your charts. So if we go ahead and expand this chart over here, let's go ahead and maximize it. Let's just say, for example's sake, you were curious how a MACD strategy would have performed on Apple over the last year. So if we go ahead and pull up Apple for a second, looking down below at the MACD indicator at the bottom of my chart, let's just say you wanted to see if you had bought every time there was a bullish MACD crossover and then sold whenever there was a bearish MACD crossover, how would have that strategy actually performed over the past year? Now, to do that, we're actually going to pull up the same studies menu that we normally go to. But this time, instead of looking within this little studies menu here on the left, we're going to come up above and click on strategies. Now, later down the line, you guys might make your own custom strategies or back tests or might import ThinkScript just like we talked about earlier. But for right now, if we wanted to use a very simple one like we talked about, a MACD strategy, we'll go ahead and search for it and then select it in the list below. You can now see the strategy over here on the right, just like our indicators would appear. But this time, if we came down below and hit OK, you're going to see a bunch of weird icons now up here on our chart. And what these are basically telling you is, every time I would have bought or sold Apple on this chart based on that MACD crossover. So looking here, we would have bought 100 shares, would have sold 100, bought 100, sold 100, bought 100. And if we wanted to see the report of how it would have done, if we just right click on any of those, we'll get a little menu here, which we can then select show report. And I'll admit this is pretty simple. It's not that advanced, but right here, it tells you exactly when we would have put on each trade and then how much we would have made. 
So right here, the first trade would have actually been to short Apple. And we can see here we'd be shorting 100 shares at 190.33. Later on, we are buying back those shares for 193.11. We're then buying another 100 at 193.11, and you can see here there are quite a few trades. And if I scroll to the bottom, it looks like 49 trades overall. And if we look down here, this actual strategy would have lost us in the long run over $3,000. Now, if we wanted to customize that a bit, because this also includes short trades, and let's just say we didn't like to short the stock, what we could do to edit that is first off close out of this pop-up window here, come back above to the Edit Studies menu, and looking down below, if we go ahead and find it and then click on the little gear icon here to edit it, at the top of this box, you'll first see the parameters we're using to actually enter the position. So the calculations used to calculate the MACD. But then down here below, we can specify when we would want to buy or sell. So in my case, this first button I've got here says MACD strategy long entry. And since all I ever want to do is open, I never want to buy to close because I never want to be shorting the stock. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this set to to open. And then for the MACD strategy short entry, I'm going to set this only to close. So I never want to sell to open. Now with that said, if we come back down here below and hit OK, hit OK, we can now see the only icons on our chart are to buy the stock to go long. And if I again right click on this and show the report, this time if we scroll down to the bottom of the list, it actually looks like this strategy would have been profitable in this case. So we would have made $594 across 24 trades. But definitely play with that. I think the backtesting can be incredibly useful, although it's not the greatest for things like options. It is pretty cool for things like stock and futures and Forex. So definitely give it a try. Now, finally, the last thing I wanted to cover is actually the flexible grid, which if we look up here, it's right next to our charts tab. Now, looking at this page, it actually is going to be really similar to the charts, but it's going to be far more customizable in terms of how you want your charts to be displayed and the size of those charts. So looking here right now, we've actually got four charts by default. We've got one big one on the top and then three little ones on the bottom. And if I were to throw in some symbols in here, have this make a little more sense, throw in Apple, we'll do Google, Microsoft, and say this final one is Netflix. But instead of four charts, you actually wanted to have three little charts on the bottom and then two medium-sized charts on the top. So looking here at the top chart, we're going to notice that there's a little box here in the center. And this is how we can either add charts above or below to the left or right, or if we want to just outright delete a chart. So in this case, let's say we wanted to put a chart to the right of this one. So we're going to go ahead and click on the center button here, just saying we want to add a new chart on the right. Now we could add a symbol up here just like before. And then if I wanted to get really crazy with this one, if I wanted to add a chart below this one, I could come over here and click on this first icon here. And now I've got a new chart below that one. And also remember that these don't actually have to be charts. So if we came down here to our bottom windows and let's say we wanted this one to be our time and sales and we wanted this one to be our level two data and maybe we wanted this lower right one to be our active trader ladder we can really customize this and make it exactly how we want. But then eventually, once you're happy with it and you want to get rid of these little icons to add or remove charts, we just need to come back up to the upper right-hand corner and click on the grid icon. And then down below, again, once we're happy with it, we're just going to uncheck Customize Grid. And now we can see all those little boxes in the center are completely gone. Now also, before you guys go, I did want to give one last plug to the trading journal I just finished. I've been working on this thing for the past year and I wanted to finally make the beta version public for you guys and start getting some feedback and some ideas of what else to add to it. Currently, you can add basically every type of trade you could possibly think of on everything from stock to options, futures, Forex, and you can even add complex option spreads as well. So rather than just adding individual legs, we could add a bull call spread or an iron condor. And then later on, we could track the performance by strategy. So we can see how we are doing on iron condors that we sell out 30 to 45 days. We can get much more detailed reports about our performance. And also, besides manually adding our trades, we can also upload our brokerage statements right here. And that way, it'll just automatically classify each type of trade. We can import thousands of trades all at once. But please do consider it. Took a lot of time on this thing, and I think it is really helpful for a lot of you traders out there, especially options traders. 
But if you do decide to give it a try, make sure to use the code TRADERLOG50 for 50% off for life. I also want to mention that it is still a work in progress, but I really look forward to all of your guys' feedback, and I will definitely incorporate as much of it as I possibly can moving forward. Now, in terms of Thinkorswim, if you guys are still feeling uncomfortable with the platform and want to get more experience, I really recommend you guys go back into paper money and make sure you feel absolutely comfortable with it before using any real money. But otherwise, check out the channel for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys there.